From a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls, here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Los Angeles Rams. First down, it's gone. And his first pass is incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. And that'll bring up second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock the Albert away and bring up second down. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage if he breaks through it's nothing but room to run there's gone now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete and he'll get it up near the 35 right at the 34 here they'll get 10 there but it leaves him just short for fourth down Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Well, Charles, a little bit earlier, you were talking about the first time that the Saints and Eagles met up earlier this season as we think about their upcoming playoff game, which you will be calling, by the way. But 48-7 was the final in Week 11. What are the keys in this upcoming game? Well, for New Orleans, an intact offensive line would be a great start. They were dinged up a little bit down the stretch. Their ability to run the football with Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara allows Drew Brees to make those throws downfield to guys like Mike Thomas and make the big plays and, of course, swing it out to Kamara out of the backfield. On the defensive side of the ball, their ability to pressure Nick Foles will actually be a key in this game. Cam Jordan, their all-pro defensive end, will have a big hand in that. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Breeze to throw on second down. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, Got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. So first and 10 now from the 30. Ready. 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 On first down, Breeze. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Ball on the 30 as they come up, second and 10. Ready. Ready. Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. He dumps it down to Ingram. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it third down. They should have gotten more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get up field with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. 
The play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. And Ginn's got it. Ted Ginn's going to go. Touchdown, New Orleans. Ted Ginn, 69 yards. And the Saints have taken the early lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Lutz with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Lutz now to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Well, before the Rams take their next snap, Charles, let's preview that game that they have coming up with the Cowboys. You talked about what they can do on offense. They're obviously going to have to shut down Dak, Zeke, and that Cowboys offense with their defense and Aaron Donald. And I think that Aaron Donald and Dominican Sue is running made a defensive tackle. They have to make sure they play down in distance each time. And what I mean by that is these guys are great pass rushers. And a lot of times when you're a great pass rusher, you want to rush the pass run every down. They have to play the run first because that's what the Cowboys are going to throw at them with Zeke. If they can slow down the run, stuff the run, they'll earn the right to be pass rushers and get after Dak Prescott in the pocket. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the V feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. The Saints offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say when you're running the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. On the stop was Aaron Donald. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coach would always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Hey, hey, hey. You got three. Ready. You ready? On second down, Ingram. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up. Back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. On third down, here's Kamara. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. 
Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? He's going to air one out. It's caught inside the 25. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. A gain of 39 that time. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. On first down, it's Gurley. <laughs> That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And he takes it across for a Rams touchdown. Todd Gurley taking it in from two yards out. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And Charles, he's able to dive in there in a short yardage situation. Just find a place to get to the end zone. Didn't matter where it was, but once he did, used his nose for the end zone and dove in. Zerline good with a PAT, and we are tied at seven. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. The return man is Hill. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for hey, here. Yellow lady, yellow lady. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Ready. Ready. Breeze hands to Ingram. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Now Breeze on third down. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, 
it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Taking it about the 16th. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Rams now coming out on the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Now Goff on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks... They'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball, who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. On second and 10, gone. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. First catch of the game for Cooks. It'll be a first down. Now a first down throw, gone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And it's second down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Throwing on third, gone. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. The dangerous hill now to return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Ready. Now a play fake here on first down. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Dante Fowler. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Four down, four down. Ready. Number 80. 
Breeze to Ingram on the draw. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. On third and long, it's Breeze. And the pressure gets to Breeze as he's taken down. Samson Abukum in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? That's pulled in at the 32. 12 yards on the return that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all offseason about our season open opponent. And they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it would have been a, been a long story. night. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and they're going to have a third down. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that his defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. From the gun on third down, Golf looking deep downfield. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss on one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. <laughs> he definitely wants that one back. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. So the long field goal misses. And now the reverse. You're in a tough spot defensively. They'll start the drive at the 43. We got three. Ready. We're ready. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. On second down, here's Breeze. Caught on the left side by Ginn. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Give him 30 yards there. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available 
and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Breeze now on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against the zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. He lost two there, and it's third down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. From the gun on third down, Breeze. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And Lutz's kick is good. And that will knot us up at 10. So a good snap, good hold, and right down the middle. Never in doubt, just the way you used to hit a partner. You mean like uh, kicking the ball? Exactly. Well, that was in high school. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't care what level you hit them, they go through. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of two, now third down. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. The Rams on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 11. From the gun, here's Gone. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels 
where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Goff on first down. And Cooks has it over the middle. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. Right side complete. That's Woods. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Goff to Woods as the Rams move the chains. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people have to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. They go play action here on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Josh Reynolds that time, and that'll bring up second down. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. And this is caught at the eight. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it an eyelash. Dropped at the one. That one goes for 36 yards. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make the play on the football. Go off throwing again. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. In for the score. And the Rams have broken our tie as they take the lead. So they go play action. Three tight ends out there in the heavy set. Well, they showed everything that suggested running play. Just what you mentioned, three tight ends, heavy formation, able to go play action off of it because if you're a defender, you're thinking it's a running play with that much beef on the field. But they passed it, and they got six out of it. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that makes it a 17-10 score. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive dead with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Matt Longacre able to get in there and take him down for a loss of three. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Now Breeze throwing on second down. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. The Saints on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. Here it's third and three. Ready. Waiting. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. 
And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Ready! We're waiting! They stay on the ground. This time it's Kamara. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Shotgun now for Breeze. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Carr. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. It's a big play there for the Saints. 55 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those no types way, of plays no that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? They give it to him running left. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, it's been a tough go for them. These guys have been driving down the field, but defensively, once they got their backs to the goal line, turned up the pressure, that's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Lutz puts this one through. And that will cut this lead back down to four now at 17-13. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They're starting to pull away with this one. Early on that first quarter, they didn't look so great offensively. What has changed? Sometimes it's just a matter of doing what you plan to do better. Sometimes you just put that all together and you execute. Other times it's just in a simple adjustment in your game plan finding a spot that maybe was a little weaker than maybe you thought, and going to that. So many different things, so many different ways, but right now, you gotta like what they're doing. They have put distance between themselves and their opponent. Looking to add on here in the second quarter. Earlier this half, you were wondering how the defense was gonna handle him defensively. Were they gonna bottle him up at different levels, so to speak, is what you said. What have you seen so far? Well, I think they've been absolutely terrific because it feels like on every play, if we were watching this in the film room, when you clicked off the film or stopped it, you would see 11 shirts of that same color right there in the frame trying to tackle it. That's what you're looking for. Wide open receiver complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45.
Goff now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. Goff now looks to throw. It's caught left side by Cooks. And he'll get it down here to the 43. 10 yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. Right. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting right. up here, right. it's starting to wear on him a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter, you just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Goff in the offense with a first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. To the air again. Goff firing quickly here, and that's complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So you got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. From the red zone now, gone. And that incompletion breaks a string of five straight connections. And it's second down. So they look like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Throwing again is gone. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, You'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. Again, golf. They'll throw underneath for Gurley. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Now it's Zerline to try the Ram field goal. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that, and we haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. And here's Lewis. 
And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and 10. Attempt carry here for Mark Ingram across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Shot before half for Breeze. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. LaMarcus Joyner with a pick. And he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. So we've come to halftime. It's the visiting Rams taking the lead to the break. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports halftime report. Take it away, Coach. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And the third quarter starts with a run by Ingram. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Ready! We're waiting! Breeze to throw on second down. Now he'll let it go deep left side. And both guys were there, but it falls incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. The Saints on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Breeze. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively, but instead it just brings up fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Oh, well, here come the Rams, and they get it. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. But we say it all the time, offense, defense, don't forget about special teams. Big punt block there. And how many coaches have told us if we make a big play on special teams, if we find a way to rush coming, and he's taken down. Tyler Davison breaking through to get him for a loss of seven. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range. And that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. 12 yards is the pick up there. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. 
In today's NFL, when you get teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys. And that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them. And now, instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. On first and goal, Gurley. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Todd Gurley, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Rams add on to their lead. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. Zerline good with a PAT. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Zerline out now to kick this one away. And here's Lewis. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at the 31 yard line. Ready? You ready? They'll try to get the ground game going with Ingram. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Incomplete, he had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's Thomas Morstead now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way. And I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. 
corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. Back to the air, Goff on second down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ballgame now, and he's got a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go through a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. A couple of first downs on the drive already, as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Back to the workhorse today, it's Gurley. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. C.J. Anderson of the game. He gets it here. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out. But a running game can really benefit your team right now. They run again on first down. Anderson. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. They'll try the air now with Gaul. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Cameron Jordan in there to get him for a loss of five. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Back to throw, Goff. And this is going to be incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. A handoff. It's Mark Ingram. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13.
A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Ready. Waiting. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two-yard line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They're going to have to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage would be found. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Three down, three down. Ready. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And he's able to get this one up to the eight-yard line this time. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves them looking at a fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought the punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys would get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it. He loses it. Somehow, ball finds his way back to him. Atone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Goff now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Out of the gun. Goff. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that's going to lead to a third down. The Rams on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and seven. A shotgun snap for goal. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll go down at the 28. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. And here's Lewis. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. 
Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Ready? You're waiting. Ingram again. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. They go play action for Ingram. Now Breeze. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. It's a gain of 17, and it'll give him a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Kamara. <laughs> and a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. On second down, here's Breeze. They'll set up the screen now to Kamara. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Ready. You waiting. To throw, it's Breeze. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Breeze now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. To throw is Breeze. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Smith. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium ready, for all of that now. Breeze to throw again. And Thomas has it. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Now Ingram, he's been busy today. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. The tackle there by LaMarcus Joyner. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback it makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Now Breeze throwing on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. 
So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Breeze now to throw. This will be caught at about the five. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. They'll run it with Kamara, and this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. This is caught, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Five yards that time on the completion, and now it's third and goal. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Movement there on the offensive line, a little quick, and a five-yard penalty. So that'll back them up five. A bad time for a false start penalty as they're backed up now for third and goal. Shotgun now for Breeze. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. As his guys are in for six. And the Saints get a bit closer. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. Lutz now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Right side complete. That's Woods. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Reynolds. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. 
Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. On second down, here's Goff. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. From the gun on third down, gone. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Back to the ground game here, Gurley. And able to work his way down to the 16. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've right. ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys, they're just saying, let's just keep running it out, and we've got them now. Now it's Gurley, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Here's gone. This will be caught at about the six. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Four down, four down. Uh. On second down, Anderson. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. The Rams on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and four. Goff now looking to throw. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Alex Okafor. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. The return man is Hill. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? 
I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They're throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. Breeze again here on second and 10. And Watson has it, right side. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. In this situation, the dictation is coming from the defense, right? They're going to tell you. You can have six, seven yards, do that all the way downfield. Let's just go ahead and take the time off the clock. I think they've got to start attacking vertically a lot more. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. From the gun, it's Breeze. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Breeze now on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Watson. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain there on the completion. Second and 10. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. On first and 10, here's Breeze. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, Guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Again, it's Breeze. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Ready. Ready. Now, Breeze again. Finds his man, Watson, over the middle. And he's got this down to the 35. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Breeze going to throw. Over the middle, complete. That's Watson. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Breeze to throw on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Carr. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Here's Breeze to throw. Over the middle, complete. It's Watson. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. The Saints in the hurry up here, clock continuing to roll. Now Breeze, and Watson has it right side. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Now hold everything here, we're gonna get a timeout by the offense. 
as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. from the gun, it's Breeze. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Second and goal from inside the five. To throw, it's Breeze. The quick slant caught. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout called as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Ready? You're waiting. Breeze to throw again. And this is caught. So it's a late touchdown, but maybe too late. Still a little time left on the clock, however. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one to five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one to five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah, yeah. yeah, you know, it doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> So looking at this situation, you should have time for the onside kick and then at least one play. And the Rams have got it. And that should just about seal this one. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. Goff with a kneel down here, and that should put a conclusion to this one. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game, they also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 <laughs> with three or four home runs mixed in. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long from the Bayou.